Why does giving glucose cause permanent brain damage in alcoholics? This is one of the most high yield concepts you need to know for the USMLE. So I'll start by asking you first, what enzyme converts glucose derived pyruvate into acetyl-CoA? So it enters the Krebs cycle and what cofactor does this enzyme require? Because if you understand that biochemistry, the whole mechanism will make sense. All right, so the enzyme is pyruvate dehydrogenase and the cofactor it needs is thiamine. Without thiamine, pyruvate dehydrogenase can't function, meaning glucose goes through glycolysis and produces pyruvate just fine, but that pyruvate hits a wall. It can't enter the Krebs cycle to make ATP. Now chronic alcoholics are almost always thiamine deficient because alcohol blocks gut absorption and they typically don't eat well. So their pyruvate dehydrogenase is already barely functioning. Well here's where glucose becomes dangerous. When you flood a thiamine deficient patient with glucose, you're massively increasing the demand on an enzyme that already is running on empty. All that glucose becomes pyruvate with nowhere to go. It gets shunted to lactate causing acidosis and more importantly the neurons that are most metabolically active, the mammillary bodies and medial thalamus can't make ATP and they start dying. This is seen in Wernicke's encephalopathy with confusion, ataxia, and ophthalmoplegia. If you give thiamine quickly, it is reversible. However, if you miss it, it progresses to Korsakoff syndrome, a permanent type of anterior grade amnesia where the patient can never form new memories again. That damage is irreversible. So here's the rule. In any alcoholic or malnourished patient, give thiamine before glucose or at minimum, give them together. Never glucose alone because you could cause brain damage that didn't have to happen.